Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Today is the TGIF and Product Owner episode, and we have with us this week, Johannes Lindman. Hey, Johannes, welcome back. Hey, thank you. So let's imagine it's summer. We're in a beautiful terrace in Stockholm near the sea, and we're just having a beer. Uh, and uh, we're talking product owners. And uh, I really yeah. want to hear this story. So first, we'll start with the story of a bad anti-pattern in the product owner role. We'll go into that in a second. And of course, we'll end today's episode with a great story, a great product owner. So let's start with the difficult one, the anti-pattern, Johannes. Share with us what might have been potentially the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career. Thank you. First of all, it's never the person, the product owner, that's the problem, of course. It's the uh, when they're trying... The pattern I see is when they try to create a proxy product owner or actually doesn't know very much about the product. Uh, it's a horrible pattern I see it all because if people, are, management are told that they need a product owner for the team or the team requests a product owner because they need the priorities set and management or whatever organization is around them. They don't understand it, but they want to be agile. So they put the hat on some uh, poor, ambitious person <laughs> who realizes quite quickly that they can't do the job because they don't understand the business. They don't understand the priorities and they, they really don't understand technology either. So they, don't, they really don't know what to do. Uh, and that's so sad to see because it hurts everybody. Uh, and it's, well, that's a typical pattern when they assign a role uh, to a person who doesn't understand the role and can't do anything. Uh, of course, we're not always in the position to affect that, right? Like sometimes it just is the wrong person uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. We just have to survive it. So uh, when you think about that particular anti-pattern, the proxy PO, as a scrum master and as an agile coach like how, how do you try to work with the with the system not just the person but also you know the things around to try to anyway give the team what they really need because of course they need the understanding and they need the priorities yeah uh, since it happens all the time uh, i have some solutions to it <laughs> uh, of course support uh, the product owner given the basics so they, they actually understand what they should ask for in the organization what support they need. In parallel with that, uh, I go out and actively hunt down the actual product or business owners. Uh, and it's just following the money, which is hurting for if this is not done right. Find that person and, and try to drag them into first a contact directly with the team sometimes, but more or less at least create the connection with this poor proxy owner. and and the, together figure out and let them understand that you need each other because you won't as a business owner wherever your title is you won't get what, what you expect unless this person we have here starts to understand your world and you need to really fast become best friends and, and work together uh, that's the, and then you they see this as a apprentice and that's a could usually win-win in the end because the apprentice learns and it sees a career path to become a business owner in the future. Uh, but then they also realize, I hey, know I can act as a product owner and, and do my job. And uh, so that's uh, going outside the team and hunt down the right person. Uh, that's the, the hard part as a scrum master. And get not stepping on people's toes, being politically smooth sometimes to figure out how can I borrow you and how much time can you get for this? Because then explain how important it is that we. Uh, have this connection uh, to the value, uh, actually. Yeah, don't step on people's toes is always a good uh, advice and uh, not necessarily easy to follow, though, because I imagine that as you go out of the team and potentially even out of the department and try to figure out who's the business owner, who is really making or needs to make the decisions, who has access to the information. Uh, I, I mean, of course, the proxy PO might feel a little bit stepped on, uh, if they are not on board, uh, but also the team manager might feel like that a little bit. Like, how do you manage that? Like, what are the things in your mind when you go like, okay, I really need to go out and I need to get in, in touch with these people? Yeah, 
first of all, uh, I have to do the balance with uh, will I get fired or thrown out? Then I won't do any more use. Uh, then I'm true. useless. So I, yeah, yeah. I, I can't be aggressive or I can't be road telling what idiots you are. You made this bad decision. That's not a winner. Uh, so you have to be some street smart and then say, okay, well, let's see what you can do and fix this. But uh, of course, uh, how, how do you phrase it? Uh, how do I? But, but because the, the management has appointed this product owner, they've done something that uh, they didn't understand and they are, could feel embarrassed. And when they realize they've done a mistake, more or less, which they actually have done. So I, I need to take care of that and say, okay, uh, now we learned something and, and we, we're going to fix this together. And this is how it should work. Uh, and uh, try to see it as an opportunity to spread uh, how this is intended to work, because that's probably the underlying problem. People don't understand why we want to organize in teams sometimes, or why this product owner person is so important. Everybody says it, but they have not really experienced it and see if there's an opportunity. Maybe we could have a basic training or do some fun simulation exercises, which I love. So then I get an arena for doing that with new more people, with managers and so on. So I, I try to find win-wins in, in these situations. Yeah, absolutely. We just had uh, last week the Product Owner Summit organized by the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. There's a lot of content there about the product yeah. owner role. And uh, this is actually a great example of how important it is for us as Scrum Masters to fully understand and also be able to support the people in that role. Definitely. The most important role sometimes, I think. So, uh, of course, now we're getting close to the end and we want a great story of a great PO. So, Johannes, share that with us what might have been potentially the best product owner you've ever worked with? How did they work? Oh, uh, that's Anna, easy. <laughs> uh, kind of young, uh, thin blonde uh, girl uh, who was super, uh, what do you call it, ambitious uh, in the, uh, on the business side at a small bank I was in uh, when we asked for, we need a product owner to make our priorities correct. And, and when she heard the message, she just, uh, lift up from her desk and said, well, I'll take it. I want to do this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> because she she really had been so annoyed for a long time that she didn't get what she wanted from the, our systems and, and things. Uh, she knew nothing about Agile or nothing about product owner or team or something, but she knew what she wanted. And uh, then we kind of, I tried to, should we do some training product? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, backlog. Yeah, it looks like a good idea to have a backlog. I have an next spreadsheet. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, you're home. Uh, and uh, then I just told her some few pointers, concept like uh, don't don't spoon feed the team, but don't overload them. Just give them enough. And she really got it. She said, this is my most important thing this week. Can you do it? Yes, the team took it and we're done two days later. Then, okay, now I have two things. And then she just started to... She, Pull, it wasn't exactly pulling to the, from the team, but she didn't push either. She just said these are the things in her, until they said, okay, now they are busy for a week. And then I just go away. And then, then she eagerly and curiously showed up at the stand-ups. How's it going? How's it going? And then some, oh, well, you know, we need to fix this bug that came up this morning. Can, can I look at the book, bug? Yeah, this is not important. Crap it. <laughs> or, or this bug. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that you have to do. Sorry. And then you have to wait with this other thing we said yesterday. So, so she was so brilliant uh, because she knew exactly what she wanted. And she had uh, also mandate, I guess, to prioritize exactly what she did. Uh, and no one dared to question it because she was right. She knew what we were doing. Again, uh, skills in the business and the uh, goal orientation trumps uh, certified PU uh, training every day. Well, why do you pick up those two? So you said skills in the business and goal orientation. Why are those, you think, the most important characteristics of a great PO? I think it's the compliment that the team uh, rarely can master themselves because they are skilled in other things and this is what they're lacking desperately. A real mature team might understand the business, especially if they come from a startup, they are, they are the business. 
uh, and they can make realize what, what this makes in ways of money and the long term and short term. But the, usually this is something that the team doesn't have the cognitive capacity to take in. Uh, what's the market need? What is so our users need? Uh, and what is the most important? No, they really don't know uh, and they want guidance. Absolutely. And I think you put it brilliantly. These are the skills the team usually doesn't have within themselves and they need somebody to to bring those those skills and of course that's the PO uh, brilliantly said brilliant story and uh, I'm, I'm happy you met Anna and if you see her again uh, tell her congratulations yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've been named as absolutely. a great PO absolutely uh, Johannes we're getting close to the end but before we go do share with us where can people find out more about you and the work that you're doing oh uh, you can google me and you will find some YouTube clips in Swedish uh, sorry for that. I, I will try to uh, work in Swedish most of the time. Uh, LinkedIn, of course, it's uh, not an extensive bio because I'm saying I'm just an available as contractor. I don't display all my assignments because we have lots of banks and uh, other uh, authorities that I don't want to show off with. Yeah. So, but LinkedIn uh, and happy contact me. Just drop me an email or Google me. You'll find my mail. Uh, Absolutely. We'll put the link on the show notes so that people can easily connect with you on on uh, on LinkedIn and why not send a few follow-up questions. Johannes, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Thank you for having me. Super fun. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over, but there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. So join us at scrummasterpodcast.com and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more full week of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.